Namaste, Vanakam, and Swagatam, everyone. I am Divya P. Bhavnani, and I am glad to see you all here today. Here, on behalf of ICYR Anandashram, I place a humble gratitude to the Indian Yoga Association for giving us this wonderful opportunity to celebrate the divine life of Param Pujya Ammaji. And yes, this is indeed part of the 21-day countdown to the International Day of Yoga 2024, which is under the theme of Empowering Women Through Yoga. So here we are here to celebrate the divine Shakti, the amazing Yogini Param Pujya Ammaji, Puduvai Kalemamani, Puduvai Shakti, Shribati Meenakshi Devi Bhavanani herself. We have five dynamic Shaktis who have been closely associated with her and are here to share with us the essence of her life and the bestest of her teachings in yoga. I welcome Yoga Chani Devasena Bhavanani, Yoga Chani Kalavati Devi, Yoga Chani Deepika, Yoga Chani Sangeeta and Yoga Tilakam Meena Ramanathan. So let's see what they have for us.
Angelo, they are going to do. That's uh, again Tabra Brand of Amatis. That's really making the kids again and again. The uh, adults also love that with the right brain, left brain connection, and of course, thinking about the I mean, right brain is fully like uh, all the uh, arts the connection, and the left side, God is Lakshmi, we say, is connected with the science, and of course, God is Saraswati, we say for the right brain. So it's bringing both together in the practice, and uh, again, the prefrontal cortex also slowly, slowly. Starting to develop. So this Kriya, we start with the clapping, right foot, clap, left foot, clap, right side, clap, left side, clap, left foot, clap, right foot, clap, left right, clap, right leg. Of course, we are changing the speed also. Clap, right foot, clap, left foot, clap, right side, clap, left side, clap, left foot, clap, right foot, clap, left right, clap. So we make them to do all the play speed actually. So bring them slowly, slowly from the awareness she was bringing up to the conscious level actually. So some of the practice very interesting. We are going to go and show up some of the few practices in Amaji's class, always the standing practices, few asanas, and we are going to go to the Ruksha asana. So Ruksha is the three. First version of Ruksha asana we are going to try. So in this again doing the using the mudra like the three branches, breathing in, Anjali mudra, out opening the hands like the three branches, opening, breathing in, back to namaskar, out breath straight then, breathing in, agra mudra, out breath back to namaskar. Releasing the arm, releasing the foot. Opposite side, the voice balancing, so always you do the opposite side. So, Namaskar Mudra, breathing in, Anjali Mudra, out breath, opening the arms like a branches, breathing in, Namaskar Mudra, stay there, out breath, in breath, Agra Mudra, out breath, back to Namaskar. Releasing the arms, releasing the foot. We are going to try the Arthur Chandrasana, like in the tree posture. We really learning, thinking about the tree and uh, think about the trees, natural of the tree and the qualities of the tree so that we are growing, uh, not really cutting the trees. So slowly, slowly the asana has the meaning and uh, the purpose and meaning as Samadhi says. So slowly, slowly we are developing when we are doing the asana. We are going to do the Ardha Chandra asana in that again we are respecting the nature, the main energies, sun and moon. So we are respecting, we want to experience them within us actually. So that's happening when you are going more deeper in the asanas. So we are going to do that, Arthur Chandrasana. We are opening up the three feet. From that, bending the right knee, placing the palm in the same line of the foot, and slowly making the opposite. And up, and going down on the right first, taking the arm up, the right, stand fully. using 
the Malakia. So those days the Malyudam they got from the war the traders was using these practices. So it's called Malakia. So we are using Hasan also. First of all maybe the Bhaktika we go and the Hakara we have used the Hasan also. We are using the different hand mudras also. Coming down with the Bhaktika. Then out of This is something that we did every morning in Hatha Yoga with Amaji and it's really nice just to kind of activate, release and lift up the body. So I've kind of extended it a little bit from what Amaji used to teach us. So we're going to stretch out the legs to start and we can open the legs and we're going to start tapping inside the thighs. We'll go down toward the ankles, up the outside, and again, we do three times. Three is a good number to manifest a result. And we're going to tap down the top of the legs. You can also do this even from a chair, actually. Great, let's bring our legs together and now we're going to tap the face, so just tap the fingertips 
and then tap the forehead. Let's try to release any tensions on the forehead. And then we're going to come to the temples, as we call them, either side of the eyes. We can often gather tension here. So we can just use this practice we call the Alapa Bastrika, which is a very gentle hiss, whoosh or sigh out. So we can breathe in. Just gently hiss or sigh out through the mouth. Let go. Lovely. And now we're going to tap around the eyes. So along the eyebrows, under the eyes. Lovely. And now the cheeks. I'm going to go around the mouth and go up and down the jaw. Now let your jaw be relaxed and then top of the jaw. And this is something Amaji always used to comment on. Top of the jaw, we can often hold tension there or gather tension. So again, let's just use that Alapa Bastrika. So breathing in. Gently out the mouth. Try to have that sense of releasing. Now the ears. Let's just start to pinch the ears. Put all these acupressure points in the ears. So firmly pinching. Let's cross and pull on your earlobes and switch. Pull. And release. Now, top of the head. Let's tap top of the head. Let's try and wake up the brain, get it going, get it into action. <laughs> Especially the front part, prefrontal cortex. Tapping toward the back now, into the brainstem area. Try and release any old rubbish, old ways of thinking, as Amaji would have said, old patterns, the survival instinct. Now the neck, and along the top of your shoulders. Again, we hold tension here. Let's do another Alapa Bastrika, breathing in. Swoosh out. Lovely chest. Nice deep breath. Let's go down one arm. Palms back up. Down the other arm. Back up. And then abdominal area. So clockwise circles. The way the large intestine moves. Clockwise. And then lower back. Go up and down the back. I'm going to stretch the legs again. And this time the feet. Back up. And now freestyle tapping. So just go anywhere. Wherever you like. And then we're going to rub the palms. Get some heat, energy in the hands. And then just sweep over the head, neck, down the arms, down the body. Take a deep breath in, rush out, and shake. That brings me on to the next practice that Amaji absolutely loved, would always do, is the shaking and throwing out any clutter, rubbish, tension. So it's just gather up any psychic clutter from our energetic space. Go all around the body, gather up, gather up, gather up. Nice deep breath in, grab hold. Now throw it out with a whoosh, <laughs> let go. Again, remember three times. Clean, cleanse, clear, gather up, have that strong intention that we're really getting hold of all our clutter. Again, deep breath in. Let's throw out. Let go. One more round. 
clean, cleanse, clear, purify our Sautra, yogic niyama, part of yogic living, clean living on all levels, body, speech, mind, energy. Gather up, deep breath in, wish out, and release. And let's just take a few breaths. Try to feel that lightness. One last lesson from Amaji. Let's sit still, let's be quiet and listen. Sit still, sit upright. The yogi sits up, doesn't sit down. And listen. Be still, be quiet. Listen. Listen to the inner sound, the inner self, the inner wisdom. A few long, deep breaths. And then let's bring our palms to the heart. Let's take another nice deep breath with the Alapa Ashtrika. So breathing in when you're ready. Gently out the mouth. Let go. And then rub your palms. And cut the eyes. Let's just blink into the palms. And then we can sweep down the body. Okay, hope you're feeling a bit lighter and brighter. I am. So great to share these practices with you and I hope you enjoy the other sessions. Namaskar. And Vanakka. This is Dr. Nina Ramanathan a senior mentor of the Gitananda Yoga tradition. And I'm also heading the School of Yoga Therapy of ISEM of Sri Balaji Vidyapit Puducci. This is a wonderful initiative by the Indian Yoga Association to honor great women, the pioneers in the field of yoga. And it's such a privilege to me that I'm a little part in this also. So thanking the Indian Yoga Association and my humble gratitude to the Gitananda Yoga tradition for this wonderful opportunity to give it. So I'm here with you all today to share a few uh, you know, techniques, a few things that I have learned, I am learning uh, from and through Pujya Ammaji, our beloved Amma, Yoga Charini, Kalai Mamani, uh, Pudhuvai Shakti, Meenakshi Devi, Bhavanami. And she has taken yoga across to all the sections of the society. And, you know, like over the past six decades, she has been serving thousands and thousands through yoga, Bharatanatyam and music, all our Indian traditional arts. And I had the good fortune of assisting Ammaji during a summer intensive uh, program for the children. And it was so captivating, you know, the way she was teaching the children, interacting with the children, and, you know, uh, making across the concepts as well as the practices, combining them, making stories out of that. And it was so captivating, you know, like so interesting the way she was leading the class for the small children. So I think I have taken all these, absorbed all these, you know, from her. So today I shall be demonstrating and leading through the practice of Veera Asana, the warrior's posture. Apart from all the immense beneficial effects of this asana, the significance that I would like to mention, as Amaji had taught, is that this asana enables one to face the challenges with courage and confidence and it enhances 
the quality of virya valor and gives the moral strength uh, to you know oppose or resist opposition so whenever it comes to that you know it drives away uh, you know any doubts the fear that one carries and enhances the qualities of self esteem self confidence self reliance and what not uh, so let's uh, you know not, not waste much time about this and let's start doing the practice but before that a word of uh, caution uh, those suffering from you know any spinal issues or knee issues do it with caution do it very carefully or do it under the supervision of a qualified yoga instructor or yoga therapist and obviously immense benefits all these are happening you know with the practice of one asana so we are teaching this to all the students all streams of students at our university shri balaji so let's not wait waste much time come on, jump up into the mat and let's start doing the practice now standing up comfortably and in samastiti asana eyes closed focusing on the present moment harmonizing your mind body and the breath settling into the now the practice that we are going to do the veera asana the warriors posture so you can start doing it along with me i will instruct as i go on right so breathe in here in samastiti breathing out stretch your legs across and stretch your arms across as much as you can two to three feet or as per your comfort levels turn your head and foot to the right side bend your knee and focus on the middle finger of your hand and with normal breathing hold the posture 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 relax and slowly breathing in straighten your knee breathing out turn your head and foot to the center and now over to the other side so turn your head and foot to the left side bend your knee and focus on again the middle finger the angula drishti holding the posture with normal breathing and a pleasant smile 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 relax and slowly straighten the knee turn your head and foot and come back on to the center into samastiti so that was the first variation of the veera asana so let's go on to the second variation so the beginning part will be the same but before that let me give you a few pointers when we do this practice so when you are stretching out your arms it has to be that you know as if somebody is pulling uh, from both the sides for your arms chest open and shoulders open a complete stretch across the chest cage so that is one and the other thing when we say hold the asana it is not holding the breath at any point of time so you are doing it with a normal rhythmic breath flow right the mind body coordination and the mindfulness all being you know in the present moment okay and now again second variation stretching across as much as your comfort level uh you know approaches you and then stretching your arms and turning to the right side the head and the foot and breathing out bend your knee 
Now turn your body to the right side and take your hands up into Namaskara Anjali Mudra, looking up at your hand and holding the posture with normal breathing two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax, bring your hands down, straighten your knee, turn your head and foot back to the center and to the left side. Now bend your knee, turn your body to the left side, taking your hands up into Anjali Mudra, the salutation and hold the posture with normal breathing to Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax the posture, bring your hands down, straighten your knee, turn your head and foot back to the center, and come back into Samasthi. So, there's just one more thing that I would like to mention. When I'm teaching this asana, to the children with special needs, the Divyanga uh, children. What we do is in the final posture, the second variation, after going into the posture, we try to chant Har Har Mahadev. Right? So three times on the right side and three times on the left side for the time. Right? Now. But usually with the children, I would do five, five transformation. I'm not going into that detail, but that's how it is. So let's do uh, how we do it with the children. Okay, again, stretching your legs across your arms. Now turning to the right side, turn, bending your knee, turn your body to the right side, adjust yourself, and then take your arms up, looking up, shine along with me. Hi, hi, Maha, hey. Hare, Hare, Mahadev! Hare, Hare, Mahadev! Relax. Straighten your knee, turn over to the left side, bend your knee, and turn your body to the left side, and your arms up, look up. Hare, Hare, Mahadev! Hare, Hare, Mahadev! Hare, Hare, Mahadev! Hare, Hare, Mahadev. Coming back to the center into Samastiti. Ah. Namaste and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Namaste. I'm Yoga Charani Kalavati Devi from Om Yoga Studio in Wales in the UK. I'm a senior Gita Nanda yoga teacher for the last 25 years. And today I'm going to share a practice with you called Danda Kriya which emphasizes the importance of the body and the mind connection through use of the breath. I'm also going to show you our little sequence that we would use to come up to standing and come back down to sitting because these sequences that we have in our tradition are very important. They bring us up in a gentle way and they bring us back down in a gentle way so that we're not um, affecting our nervous system. We're keeping everything gentle, we're keeping everything calm so that nothing gets uh, shaken up or rattled, as it were. So Dunda Kriya, the practice I'm going to show you first, uh, works in a loma veloma way. So we're going to be moving one way and we're going to be moving the other way. And this is helping to balance energy in the body as we move. It creates a sense of um, peacefulness in the body. We're using a slow breath with the movement. This creates that connection with the breath and the body, the mind and the body, creating a harmony, creating a oneness you know, within our own system. So I'll talk us through as I do this. I'm gonna do three rounds um, and then we'll come up to sounding. So this is done from Vajrasana. So you'll be sitting with the heels together. The arms are just resting by the body with the hands on the thighs. 
You start by taking a nice deep breath in. And then on the out breath, you roll forwards and you bring your head down to the floor. You breathe in, lift the bottom and roll onto the top of the head. And then you breathe out, lowering the bottom down. The head's lifted to look at. And then you breathe in as you come back up to sitting. And you breathe out. You breathe in, keeping the back straight as you lift up. And then you come into a back bend. And then you breathe out again with a nice straight back, you lower back down to the heels. So breathe in. Breathing out, rolling forwards, head down. Breathe in, lift onto the head. Out and lower. Lifting the head to the back. You breathe in as you come up. And you breathe out. Breathing in, lifting the thighs and the back is straight. You go into the back bend. And then you breathe out and lower. One more time. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift the head, breathe in, coming up. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathing out. So that's Dunder Kriya, very good for the spine because it's getting a um, very good stretch. The spine gets articulated as you roll forwards and then you come up and do the back bend. So doing both bends to the spine. From here, we're now going to introduce that little routine that brings you up to standing. So from the Vajrasana, the first position that we would do um, we would do this with our hands in yoga mudra. So that's where the right fingers are all interlaced over the left. And you would just sit straight, letting the body rest, letting the body have a sense of relaxation, and also letting the breath settle into a nice, slow, steady breath. From here, we would go into Vajravirya asana. This is where we turn the toes under. So you come forwards, Toes are turned under behind you and you sit back. So it's not always easy to sit on the toes. Some people can sit for longer than the longer than others. We would do a Hasta Madra practice from Vajravirya. So from here, we would breathe in and take our arms sideways and bring our palms all the way up, bringing the palms together. Palms in Anjali Mudra. This is your highest gesture that you would make to guru or to God. Then you would bring the palms down onto the top of the head, elbows are wide. This is Kailash Mudra. Then you would bring the palms to the forehead to Anya Chakra. Palms then to the throat to Vishuddha Chakra. And palms to the chest to Namaskara Mudra. So keeping the palms together in this way, instead of losing energy from our hands, the palms are together so the energy is conserved and the energy is concentrated in the chest region. We're going to now go into Utkatasana. So you bring the palms down, lift the knees. You're going to go into a squat. If you can flat squat, if you can squat flat footed, um, do so, otherwise you can be on your toes. And from here, you hug your knees, again, bringing a sense of peacefulness and security, a, a sense of feeling safe by having that hugging feeling around your knees. We now go up into Meruasana. So I'm just going to turn on the mat so it's easier for you to see. Palms go shoulder width apart on the floor in front of you. And then the hips go up. The feet go back a little. Feet are hip width. And then we're pushing down with the arms, but also pushing down with the feet. 
so that you flatten the back and the head just relaxes down between the arms. You just hold this for a short while, breathing slowly. And we would then walk the hands to our feet. And we're just going to do a little bit of toe touching, just to a little bit of balancing to stretch out the backs of the knees. And then you can bend the knee slightly and come up to standing. So from here, we're going to go into some city asana. We're just going to stand nice and tall, opening the palms to face forward, lengthening up through the spine, keeping your head up, having the shoulders wide. Breathe slowly. Breathe deeply. So in a class, you would then do some standing jetties, you would do some asana, and then you would um, get to the point where you're gonna come back down to the floor. So this again is done in a very structured way. We would often use mala kriya, which is where you place one hand over the other. On an out breath, you're gonna whoosh the air out, and we're gonna squat three times. So breathe in, out, in, out, in, and out. Bring the arms back around the knees. So you come back into Utkatasana, lowering the head down. And then from here, you're going to go into Vajravirya Asana. So you turn the toes back under, and we'll bring the hand positions, the mudras, back through our uh, energy system again. So if you breathe in, bringing the palms up to Anjali Mudra, bringing the palms to Kailash Mudra, to Anya Chakra at the forehead, to Vishuddha Chakra at the throat, and to Namaskara Mudra at the chest. Then we're going to flatten our feet and keep those heels together as you sit back. Keeping the heels together encourages you to sit very straight, which is why it's called Vajrasana. The thunderbolt posture it makes you sit bolt upright. And then you're going to bring all the right fingers interlaced over the left and just close the eyes and let the body rest in Vajrasana, letting the body ground itself. So we've gone up in a very systematic, controlled, gentle way, and we come down in the same fashion. Namaste. I'm Yoga Tilagam Yogacharini Sangita Lauravyaji. I am a mentor in the Parampara of Swami Gita Nandagiri Guru Maharajki, in the Rishi culture, Ashtanga Yoga Parampara. I am also the director of studies and research of Gitananda Nada Yoga and a faculty of yoga studies and Gitananda Nada Yoga in India, Italy and worldwide online. I'm delighted today to be sharing with you the practice of Pranava Pranayama. This is a very articulated practice that is preceded by the study of Vibhaga Pranayama the study of Sanskrit, the study of mantras, and um, a detailed practice of asana and pranayamas. However, this practice can also be accessed uh, in a more simplified version, which is what we will share here with you today. This is a choice that I made because the pranava pranayama is a gem of this parampara, and also because I learned it directly from our beloved Amaji. 
Pudavai Kalaimamani, Pudavai Shakti Yogacharini Minakshi Devi Bhavanani. I learned it with and from Mamaji at the ashram when I studied there and lived in the ashram for a few years. Amaji loves the Pranava Pranayama, loves the Pranava Om. And I have many memories of Amaji teaching us and also guiding us in the um, utterance, in the invocation of the Om, whether it was in the ashram itself, whether it was in Swamiji Hat on Sunday nights, and for the all-night Om chanting for the Jayanti celebrations of the Guru of Swami Gitananda, our beloved Guruji Kanakananda Brigo. So the Pranava Pranayama is best performed from the Vajrasana. So you can sit up on your heels, the heels are together. If it's difficult to do this, you can sit up on the mat or on a chair, or you can also lay down if your body is unable to sit up. The most important detail is that the torso is as aligned as possible, that the spine is as aligned as possible as the sound needs to rise up. It does it naturally, but of course, the diaphragm pushes the air out, the air and the prana travel up through the three different sections of the lungs, and the sound at the same time goes from the guttural A ah, through the palatal O, through the nasal cerebral M. Mm. So the first part of the Pranava Pranayama begins with the akshara, with the sound of A, ah, the guttural A, ah, and it's connected to the low section of the lungs, which is just right below the sternum with the floating ribs, front, side, and back. There is also a mudra that helps through a reflexogenic input to focus the air and the prana in this section of the lungs and to create many, many benefits. The benefits are physical, emotional, mental and spiritual. And at the physical level, some of the benefits of the low uh, section of the lungs, pranayama, which is called adham pranayama, are um, increased circulation in the lower section of the lungs, improved digestion, a sense of grounding, a sense of rootedness, a calming of the nervous system with an activation of the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. The mudra for uh, Adam Pranayama is the chin mudra. So you can see the the tip of the fingers are together and the rest of the fingers are kept straight. Just place them here, like so. So we're going to exhale through the nostrils. Inhale for six counts through the nostrils. And when we exhale, you may focus on the lower section of the lungs as you invoke the sound of ah. So exhale to prepare. Inhale one, two, Three, four, five, six. Uh... You can relax the mudra. And just witness yourself for one more breath. Now we're going to rise up. We're rising up both in the location of the lungs because we are now going into the 
midsection of the lungs right here, front, side, and back. And the associated pranayama is madhyam, uh, the middle, madhyam pranayama. The madhyam pranayama is stimulated at a reflexogenic level by the chinmaya mudra. So from the chin mudra, we're going to gently curl the fingers and again place them here. We are also riding, rising in the vocal articulation of the pranava om because from the a ah, guttural sound, we're rising into the palatal sound of o. Same principles, exhaling, then inhaling, and then exhaling o, oh, six by 12. Exhale to prepare. Inhale. Ooh. Inhale. yourself. The benefits of Madhyam Pranayama is that as we are focusing on the midsection of the lungs, we are also focusing on the heart, uh, increasing the oxygenation of blood in this area, in the arms, in the area of the breasts and the chest. And also, as the A ah was connected to a physical manifestation, the U is connected to A, ah, an emotional manifestation. So the capacity to be more flexible emotionally, more fluid, to develop emotional intelligence. We continue in our journey Evolutionary, evolutionary journey, as Swamiji calls it. It's an evolutionary journey. And we come up to the upper apical section of the lungs, which uh, goes up all the way here to the collarbone on the front, right here in the level of the armpits in the sides and back here. So this upper section of the lungs is where most of us hold stale air. It's very important to feel at ease and also to learn to come into contact with this area of the lungs. This is the Adhi, eh? the Adhyam Pranayama. So in the Adhyam Pranayama, our um, mudra, which was, remember, for the lower section of the lungs, it was the Chin Mudra, Chin Maya Mudra, and now we have the Adhi Mudra, gentle, yes? Yeah? So we also place it here where we did place them before, and the sound is the mmm. Now the sound is both cerebral and nasal. So it's a sound that travels upwards. Hmm? Doesn't just come out of the nose, but travels upwards. So same principle as earlier. Exhale to prepare. Inhale. Mm. yourself. And now 
we are at the completion of the journey we are able to bring all of the three sections of the lungs together and all of our realms of awareness, physical, emotional, mental, which was the mm, and the mental, now we bring them together. And of course, when we bring them together, the benefits, physical as we talked, the emotional, the mental, which is the calming of the mind, the capacity to focus the mind, they all come together. And the mudra for the full pranava, aum, is the brahma mudra, or from the adi mudra, like we had, we turn the hands, we turn the arms and the hands, place them right above the bell bottom, here, and the, the navel, put it here, and we inhale low, mid, and high now, and we exhale low, mid, and high with the sounds of A, ah, O, and M. Mm. We'll practice this again three times. Again, inhaling six, exhaling 12 like we did. Therefore, for 12, we exhale four A, ah, four O, and four M. Mm. Exhale to prepare. Inhale. of the practice. If you enjoy this practice, you may repeat each sound nine times rather than three and enjoy a lengthier practice. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing these practices with us in celebration of our beloved Amaji, Puduvai Kalai Mamani, Puduvai Shakti Yogacharini, Minakshi Devi Bhavanani. Namaskara. I hope that you all have enjoyed the wonderful sharing that has been done by the five dynamic Shakti. So I would like to thank them all for their time and for sharing the wonderful and precious teachings of Parampuja Ammaji. And once again, I thank the Indian Yoga Association for giving us this opportunity and wishing you all in advance a very happy International Day of Yoga 2024. Jai Hind, long live yoga.